Optimizing your media. That may or may not make sense to you, but optimizing your media is a great way to make best use of your system's available processing speed. Today, let's talk about exactly what that means and how Plex makes it easy for you to do it. Let's start things off with what does it mean to optimize your media, specifically your videos. To explain this, you need to know that just about every media player that you use will have different stream requirements. Many variables come into play, such as video format, audio codec, resolution, and bandwidth. So for example, if you use a Fire TV in the living room, a tablet at work, and maybe a Plex web over at your friend's house, then all of those devices will need different types of transcoding. Plex handles this automatically, and it makes everything really easy. The trade-off, however, is that you need a CPU that is capable of handling this type of transcoding. Let's focus on one of those scenarios. Say that you take your tablet to work every day and you watch TV shows on your lunch break. You know that your Wi-Fi at work is kind of slow and you set your stream quality to something like, I don't know, 1.5 megabits per second. Now, just for example, let's say that your server is not powerful enough to smoothly transcode your TV show. I know that seems a little odd because even the slowest of computers can usually transcode at least one video file at a time. But remember, some people run their Plex servers off of store-bought NAS devices that come with very little CPU power. That's okay, because if they primarily use it inside their home, then that NAS might not have to do a lot of transcoding. So here we are, unable to play more than a few seconds of your favorite TV show because your server just can't keep up with it. This is where optimizing your media comes into play. Simply put, optimizing your media just re-encodes your video files into a more suitable format, like one that your tablet can play without needing a transcoder. This could mean lowering the resolution, changing the format, or just simply reducing the quality to make it streamable at specific speeds. Take that 1.5 megabit connection you have at work as an example. If your TV show requires a higher speed connection for direct playback, you could avoid having to transcode them by re-encoding the files and optimizing them for playback on your tablet with that available speed connection. Believe it or not, this was actually already an option with Plex. You could manually encode your media files, place them in the same directory, and Plex would use the most appropriate file during playback. But to do this, you would actually need to plan ahead while having access to your server, and then you would have to know a little bit about the basics of encoding video files for specific devices. With the new feature from Plex, this has gotten a lot simpler to do. The Plex Media Server now allows you to pre-encode your files for better playback while only having access to the web interface. Don't worry, I'm gonna show you how to do that, but before you try to follow along, make sure that you have at least version 9.14 or higher, although I do recommend at least 9.14.3. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump right into how to optimize your media. To do this, you need access to the Plex web interface. You can go there by going to plex.tv, signing in, and clicking the orange button at the top right. You can also do this from your local server management. Now that we're in Plex, you actually have a few different options to start optimization. I've decided that since I watch Back to the Future all the time, I want to optimize it to play on my iPad. To start it, I search for Back to the Future, and then I look for the three little dots that pop up after I hover my mouse over the poster art. Once clicked, I get a drop-down menu and instantly see the option to optimize my video. Now, I could go ahead and click it, but instead I wanna show you how to access the same option with the same three little dots while in the movie's landing page. Okay, after I click optimize, a box drops down that gives me an option for the optimization. I can change the title, quality, and storage location. Of course, the primary focus here is gonna be the quality settings. So if I click the drop down, I get these options. This is great and all, but I want to optimize the video for some really slow Wi-Fi on my iPad. So I click on custom, then inside the, this drop down, I select iOS and then pick the speed that I need. In my case, I'm gonna select 720 kilobits per second. Now I have the option to either store the optimized videos in the same folder as the original or to choose a different location. This is actually pretty useful because I might want or need to optimize video and keep them in a separate drive. However, before that location will show up, I will need to create the folder and then add it to my library just like I did with my other folders. In this case, I just wanna keep everything in the same folder as the original because it's simple. Now that I've selected all of my options, I click optimize. Once done, I can either click on the link that popped up to monitor the progress, or I can click on the activities icon in the top right of the page and then click on conversion. From here, I can see how fast it's going, what percentage is done, and how long it has left. I can also pause or cancel it. 
After my conversion is completed, if I wanted to see or manage all of my converted videos, all I have to do is click the settings icon from the top right, click on servers, and then click optimize versions. This is good to remember because if I ever wanted to delete a converted video, this is where I would go. All of that was pretty simple and I have to say impressive as well. This will definitely be a great feature for many situations, but I'm not done yet. Let's say I wanted to optimize every movie I have that I haven't watched yet so it was easy to play on my iPad. I could do this by clicking into my movies library and then clicking optimize from the three dots on the side. I would select my quality as I did before, but this time I would check the unwatch only box and then uncheck the limit to box. Now of course I wouldn't want to do this because I actually only want to convert a few of the most recently added movies I have. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of this, access the filter options from the left hand side and select date added. Now when I click optimize, Plex knows what filter I selected and when I choose the options to limit the amount of videos to something like, I don't know, 5, Plex will convert the 5 most recently added movies automatically. Okay, so if you have a powerful enough server to meet your needs in any situation you have, this feature might end up being just a waste of space for you. But if you have a very low powered server, then this could be the perfect feature that makes Plex usable. Now keep in mind that at the time of creating this video, the optimized feature was only available to Plex Pass members as a preview release. They are planning to include this feature in the next full public release. So if you don't see the option to download the correct version, then you might have to wait just for a little while. If you wanted to try it out and you're not a Plex Pass member, you can easily upgrade your account if only temporarily via the Plex.tv website. I will also throw a link in the description so you can read more on what Plex Pass offers and see if it's the right fit for you. That's all for today. Thank you for watching. Smash the like and subscribe button below and have a great day.